Good, thank you. Welcome everybody to our Thursday study session. And I'm filling in for Council President Beggs for a few minutes anyway. First on our agenda is the Plan Commission Work Program. And Spencer Gardner, you are going to be briefing us on this. Welcome. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Councilmember Kinnear. Is my microphone working? No. I don't think so. Okay. Should I just yell louder? Test one, two. Do a yeah. test. There we go. I think there it's on now. Go. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, as you know, we've not, uh, Council has not adopted a work plan for the 2022 um, Plan Commission work cycle. Uh, I'm here to remedy that. So what we, uh, what I've suggested and what we've proposed is that we would do a combined 2022-2023 work program since we're approaching 2023, uh, adopting a program that only lasts for a couple of months to then go back and adopt the same thing in a few months just seemed like it was more work than was needed. So um, you should have received the, um, the program from me and uh, you can take a look through there I've highlighted in red items that we would potentially remove from the work program, either because they were completed or because they've been displaced by other things. And then I've highlighted in green new items that have appeared. Most of these are related to the interim zoning ordinance and the follow-up work that needs to happen. Um, and then I did highlight one item in gray, that's the North Town Center plan. Uh, I know there's some interest uh, about that and so I just wanted to that's mostly highlighted so that I could talk about it um, there is still interest in what's going on in uh, Northtown and there is an interest in doing some planning work there we are actually there is a, an item included in the work program for a, a transit oriented development study on the division corridor and our expectation is that one of those station locations that we focus in on for more detailed planning would be around Northtown so that would, that would be sort of a lead into then subsequent planning efforts around Northtown. Council Member Stratton? So will you help me, because I've looked at this and maybe I didn't see it. Um, I know we've had discussions about Strong Road and trying to get that moving up somewhere on the plan. Is that on here? Because I didn't see it. Uh, no, I haven't put anything on Strong Road here. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what amount of planning work would really be needed. It sounds like that's mostly more like an engineering issue. That's a six year plan plan. So that's different than this. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because this is really just what is plan commission considering. Okay. And so with strong road, I mean that's not that's not something plan commission would traditionally get involved in. Perfect. So I don't know that it really needs to show up here, but um, we can we can have that conversation if you want to that makes sense discuss. that I didn't see it then. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Council member uh, Cathcart. Yeah, uh, I don't see it on here. Maybe it's just wrapped up in something else, but um, kind of what, what I've been advocating for on tiny lot development for mm -hmm. pallet type stuff. Uh, I do have in listed in the development code updates. And again, this is sort of follow up work from the interim zoning ordinance. Uh, we list housing variety, uh, cottage housing, home occupations and plan unit developments. Uh, the tiny lot um, issues that you've talked about, I think would be wrapped up in cottage housing and potentially in PUD. I can, I can add would, it in there as an explicit item. Would you, you want would you to be amenable to just say cottage housing slash tiny lot yeah, sure. development? Yeah, I can add that just to make it just really, so it's not really lost. clear. Yeah, mm -hmm. that'd be great. Other questions before Spencer continues? Okay. Is there anything that's, that I've marked for removal here that causes any concern? Um, and so again, the removal is in is in red. I've I've highlighted it so in red. Oh, you got you didn't get a color printout. It's right here. So uh, the, I can I can just explain the items. The first is that phase one housing code amendments, and that's because those are done. That's AD, ADU attached or um, short plat, and then the attached homes and duplexes is part of the interim ordinance and would then be addressed in the follow up development code updates. Okay. So I've highlighted that for removal. Oh my God, I want to see my um, and then. All of the highlighted stuff at the bottom of the list, starting with Highway 2, the West Plains Transportation Study, down to the design guidelines, um, those all I highlighted for removal. So a question, though, mm -hmm. on the design guidelines, Shoreline, okay. Um, in 195, when we were doing 
comp plan changes, I think it was two years ago, and we agreed to delay a comp plan change to study a possible center for the Eagle Ridge area. And you, this is before your time. So is that on anybody's radar at all? Are we gonna maybe have a consultant do that? Or? Um, Eagle Ridge has, is on everybody's radar. <laughs> we yeah. know that there's a lot of um, you know, work, planning work to do there. Um, and there's still a lot of growth pressure and um, you know, plats are happening, actively happening, those kinds of things. Uh, I did not include it in here. Um, my understanding was that the, the prior discussions around that effort, and this would be the sub area plan in that area to yes. really identify some of those things, um, that there was not enough interest to really fund it and again, that's just my understanding. I don't really, I wasn't there, so I'm not sure. Uh, we could certainly undertake some kind of a sub area plan. Uh, we, it would probably require bringing in a consultant, and at this point we don't have funding set aside for it. But if that's something council wanted to fund, we could certainly add it here and, and undertake something. Well, it was my understanding, because I was on that committee, that um, we, we would, that was the reason that we deferred it so that we could study it. So. I'm just putting it back on your radar. Maybe we, we can talk about it offline. Yeah, and, and again, we could, we could add that and um, at least open the door for council to move ahead with you know, a, a plan for doing that. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Um, yeah, a couple things. So one on the, the North Town, what, why did you say it was grade? Uh, just so I could highlight it and talk about it. And okay. again, the, the answer there is we are doing some planning work around North Town. It's related to the division corridor study right. that we're doing. And so if there's further planning work needed after that, we could keep it on the list and then do more, more detailed yeah. study. But this is really looking at land use issues and um, making sure that, we're, that our you know, land use is creating opportunities to leverage the transit investment that STA plans to move forward with. Well, and, and yeah, I agree. I mean, I'd like to keep it on the list. I think it, mm -hmm. it's something that needs to get done. But at the same time, I, I would like to have some further conversations with you know, the property owners in that area and make sure that there's some at least interest, desire in, you know, um, seeking some of these changes and whatnot, um, and if they would take advantage of that. Um, I was also wondering, so there's been a lot of conversation, I don't think we've ever had it on the work plan, but uh, around funding a sub area plan in the NEPDA um, specifically. And so um, I'm assuming it would get, we would have to hire a consultant to do that, to do that work. And I know we had talked about at one time using ARPA dollars to do that, it's been, probably 11 months since that conversation, but um, but anyway, so that's one, uh, just a flag. And then a question on North Bank. I'm curious, stadium district plan, I mean, the stadium's being built right now, so is it not prudent to, to do the district plan, or I'm just kind of curious on why that struck. So there was some planning done around North Bank a couple of years ago, and a lot of the recommendations from that were, the ones that were still applicable were folded into the downtown plan. Okay. Um, things have changed a lot, and uh, I think there is some planning work that would make sense to do in the North Bank area. Um, like anything else, there's you know planning work needed around the city, and so that's not one that um, rose to the top, at least okay. um, as, as we were putting this together, but this is council's opportunity to really direct the plan commission on what the priorities are. Just so. curious on your side of that, so thank um, you. I'll add for the... Um, on the question of any PDA, uh, I, I'm, now that I'm looking through this, I may not have included this, but we do actually have those ARPA plans, and uh, Hilliard was one of those areas, yes. and the Northeast PDA, yeah. and we are um, we're, we've been doing some initial work to get set up for that. So that is that is still something that needs to be on here, and I'll make sure that's added. Um, I thought I had it on here, but now that I'm looking through, I don't think it is. So I'll make sure that's on there too. Perfect. If I could add uh, to your question about North Bank. So Melissa Whitstrup did uh, the planning, preliminary planning around that, if I'm recalling right. Is that right, um, Tyrrell? Was that? Yeah, okay. So, um, and then it was folded into the downtown plan. And um, I don't, I just don't know that a lot needs to happen. I mean, it was pretty, she did a pretty thorough job. Um, so. Yeah, I think, um, uh, part of it, I think, depends on how far you extend your definition to the North Bank. I think there's right. a lot of opportunities for um, reinvestment and infill development in the areas around that. 
but in the immediate adjacent area of the stadium. I mean, the, the Public Facilities District is the primary landowner there, and they've made pretty clear what their plans are. So um, if, if, if we were to look, take another look at that area, I think it would at least warrant expanding the boundaries of what we consider in part of that planning process. Okay, anything else? Um, if you don't have any more questions for me, I think we can just, uh, our, our plan is to move ahead with a resolution for you guys um, coming up here pretty soon. Okay. I'd and then we'll have an official work plan in place. I'll be happy to sponsor that for you. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Go oh. ahead, if you need to. Okay. Thank you, Spencer. <clears throat> and Mr. Boston, we're going to have an ARPA update. Hello and thank you. All right. Can you make that bigger? It looks like an eye chart. It's, it's gonna be a pretty big disaster there for a okay. second. Um, yep. That one's gonna be an eyesore. And I'll, I'll read most of that one, but that one's gonna be difficult really to make bigger. I'll make it presentation style. help to start from the beginning. Okay, so this is just a real hi high level overview of kind of where we're at, just the ongoing updates of the ARPA funds and the status. Uh, this one here? Okay. So uh, just going to start off with a couple of the changes in the RFPs that we've had thus far. So just, just for everybody's recollection, um, recently, we had talked about how we were going to uh, pull funds from the overall ARPA allocation so that we could be administering a lot of these programs ourselves. Two challenges that we found uh, within those programs that we're going to be administering ourselves is uh, support in the arts as well as child, child care support. Uh, those, those were brought back to the subcommittee, uh, the, the council administration uh, joint subcommittee, and it was, it was identified that that both of those initiatives should be administered by a third party uh, uh, organization so that uh, we could best utilize the, the uh, expertise that they have in helping those applicants uh, apply for the funds. Arts, again, I mean, we're, we're dealing with a lot of artists that, that haven't been uh, privy to applying for federal funds in the past. So this is something important that there is going to be a degree of handholding that we need an organization that already has that partnership and that bridge with those artists within the community to help them in assisting with uh, applying for those grants, as well as identifying what the exact need is um, within the, within the uh, community. Likewise, child care support was similar to that. What we did when we were thinking, okay, well, we'll, we'll get all the, these funds out to um, child care organizations within the community that have dealt with uh, federal grants. We, we unintentionally forgot about a lot of the child care facilities that don't have the administrative support that are out there. Uh, the, you know, there, there, are the kinder, there are the kinder care type organizations that are out there that are used to applying for federal funding and um, federal and state funding. Uh, and then there are kind of the mom and pop, uh, you know, family owned uh, child care facilities that have uh, one or two employees and maybe seven or eight uh, children that are under their care that don't have the administrative support. So likewise to, to the support in the arts, we wanted to have a administrator that was out there that had those partnerships within the area and had uh, familiar, familiarity of um, applying for those grant funds. And, and I'll just say, Matt, thank you for the child care. We really realized that those smaller organizations are family members and how we had it originally structured that you couldn't pay a family member, but they were the workforce of those centers. So we need to really take a look at that because that would have cut off a significant number of potential child care providers in our city who really need the support going forward. Right, I, I think what you're mentioning is, is specific to the premium pay and, mm -hmm. and yes, I, I think that that happened that a lot of these child care organizations that were the you know, quote unquote mom and pop family run uh, organizations uh, are getting 
squeezed out of of the industry as a, in itself mm -hmm. because they just they aren't getting the necessary income themselves <clears throat> to not, not to let alone pay an outside uh, child care provider, let alone a family member of theirs. So we, we definitely identified that and said, okay, we need we need to do a little bit more uh, due diligence there. Uh, thankful that a, uh, a community member uh, stepped up and, and gave us a lot of insight on that. So I appreciate that. Shout out to Kathy Pham. Mm -hmm. uh, so currently we have two RFPs that are underway. These are within the neighborly program. Uh, the eviction defense for 300,000, that this closes on 1026, as does the pre-apprenticeship training, closes on 1026. Uh, within the neighborly program, we have activity on both of them. 12 applications started for eviction defense, four for pre-apprenticeship training. There is a lot of traction. There's a lot of questions being asked. Uh, good news is, is we seem to be getting positive feedback on uh, the neighborly program in itself, and we're going to get a little bit of, we, we've received a little bit of criticism uh, of the, the application process and, the, and the, the, uh, the template of it, but we're, we're working with those individuals on how best to navigate those applications for this period, as well as how to revamp for future applicants to alleviate those problems. And then again, this is just high level. You've seen this allocation slide. Um, Quite a few times over the last several months. Right now, you know, 80 point, roughly 80.1 uh, that was awarded to us. 11.8 has been identified in revenue replacement thus far. Community support allocated, there's been about 54.7, and then administrative support uh, of 900,000. Leaves us with a remaining award of $13.6 million. This is just another way to look at it. Uh, the revenue calculation of $37.2 million, again, remember that that is based on the U.S. Department of Treasur Treasury revenue replacement calculation that was provided to them, provided to all municipalities to uh, identify for revenue replacement back to the city. We have, again, allocated $11.8 million in revenue replacement, primarily in the form of police capital, fire overtime, uh, uh, collective bargaining unit uh, issues. Uh, so that, that's where that 11.8 stems from. And then we have community support allocated above at, for another 11.8. I know it's a little bit confusing when looking at two 11.8 numbers, but that were the ones that were a little bit more difficult to um, report in a way that it was going to be so cumbersome and we didn't want to jeopardize any sort of risk of audit. So we put them into that revenue replacement bucket to make things a little bit easier for both our own internal and as well as lower risk when we're uh, reporting back. That leaves about 13.6. Again, both numbers uh, are aligned with that. Now this is the overall allocation of what has been provided so far to both community as well as uh, the city of Spokane. There's been 36 allocation. Uh, priorities, allocation priorities uh, since we started this exercise. Again, allocating about $67.5 million, leaving approximately 13.6. As you can see in this column, and I know, I apologize, the top is cut off for, for our uh, visual purposes here. Oh, there it is. Um, we see the final beneficiary here. We see the request origination here, and then we see the allocation amount. The final beneficiary, uh, we, you know, we have a lot of programs that not only impact the community, but also impact the city. A, a great example of that is the uh, projects of citywide significance. While they are increasing the housing within the area and, and money is theoretically going out to the community, that, that money is coming right back into the city because those, those housing developments and projects that, that are being funded by this priority wouldn't necessarily be funded if it wasn't for the ARPA funds. But so th therefore, we are getting that increase in revenue coming back to the city. So that, that in and of itself is two million. I know the mayor has asked for another three um, in some of the earlier questions. Uh, but that's, that's kind of the, the example of uh, some of the trickle down effects that we get in, in the community support and the city of Spokane benefit. Matt, um, yes. just wanted to comment on that. 
the reason that the mayor asked for three million more is because the two million is pretty much gone. Correct, and and that was Terry Stripes. Uh, that was her prediction that it was going to be gone. Yeah. Steve, Steve McDonald's and Terry Stripes predicted that that was going to be gone almost immediately because of the buzz that was around that. And it's it's been a great project. Again, another one sub area planning. It's mm -hmm. it. Um, there's a lot of projects. There's a million dollars that have been awarded to the sub area planning uh, prior initiative mm -hmm. and um, a lot of trickle down effects that are going for both the community as well as the department. Um, and then the request for origination, just so that we can kind of be clear of um, both what administration has requested as well as what council has requested. And then there are, there are quite a few that are joint requests of uh, what we've seen. So in, in having said that, um, you know, here is just kind of a quick visual of the administration request, the council request, or the joint request. Thus far, the council request constitutes for about $43 million, half of the overall award, um, which is about 63% of what has been currently allocated, not half of, or 63% of the overall award, uh, 7.8 million in those joint requests, and then 16.6 in the administration requests. Another way to look at that is to really identify who the final beneficiary of these funds are. Um, you know, the, the Department of Treasury was pretty clear on um, identifying that this these funds were for uh, not only community members, but also municipalities recovering from the pandemic. And I think that this shows a, a great example or a great illustration of how not only are we, uh, we are making the city of Spokane whole in the, the crisis that we felt, but that the majority of that money, almost two to one, is going to the community, um, the community of Spokane. And that's all I have for you today. Any questions? All right, thank you. Is that the end of our agenda? We, that is the end. You can adjourn. And we can't adjourn without saying how saddened we are that Queen Elizabeth passed while uh, Council President and I were meeting with the mayor. So, um, God rest her soul. All right. Well, it's good to see most of us, not, I don't know, Councilmember Mingle is yeah. today, but good to see you all. And it's yeah. been a long week for many of us. And coping with some grief and loss as well. So uh, just encourage you to take care of each other as best you can. And uh, we'll see you on Monday for a Sunday. meeting, double briefing session. Um, but, and uh, we have camping ordinances on the agenda with a request to suspend the rules to vote on it. So that takes a five four people to pass it, but five people to suspend the rules to vote on it. So that's probably the biggest thing coming up. But with that, we're adjourned.